Yep, sometimes we do sacrifice our queen in order to be successful in our attack. In this video, I present to you 9 beautiful traps in 9 different openings where you can sacrifice your queen in the early stages of the game in order to win fast. We started with how to sacrifice 2 pawns in the opening stage. Now, it is the queen in this video. Let's get started. Trap number 1 in the Black Mad Dima Gambit. So this is why you start with d4, then as always black plays d5. Now instead of playing c4, you go pawn to e4. And once again, the leeches that are best you guys. I just want to be showing you the top played moves like I always do. So you can see d takes e4 is what everybody does. And then you go knight c3 attacking the pawn on e4. Black is going to defend his pawn with knight to f6. And this is when you go pawn to f3. Again, most of the times black would take that pawn, after which you don't take with your knight, but your queen, allowing black to take your free pawn on d4, because that was undefended. Now you go bishop e3 attacking the queen, and you can see once again, queen b4 is what everybody plays here. Well, now you can easily castle long. The problem with castling long is that black can pin your queen to the rook. I mean, after they play the top played move, bishop g4, you can see with your own eyeballs, but hey, this turns out to be a little mistake because we can simply ignore this attack on our queen and go knight b5 which is a good move and once again you can see the top played move in the leeches database is bishop takes f3 sacrifice our queen but knight takes c7 is simply checkmate the game is over let's move on trap number two in the vienna games Stanley variation so you start with e4 then black will play e5 after you play knight c3 there's a higher chance that black will start copying all your moves kind of the copycat variation just doing whatever you do for example knight c6 you go bishop c4 and then they play bishop c5 you can see in the leeches database i mean black is just copying whatever you're doing but you can simply stop them by playing queen g4 which they can't copy because look black cannot play queen g5 they'll lose their queen and for some reason you'll see them playing queen f6 which is the top played move once again you guys i understand this defense the g7 pawn which was being attacked by our queen that's one and another purpose of queen f6 is to take on f2 if we don't do anything about this pawn but we don't care we just go knight d5 allowing black to take on f2 and give us a check but our king will be very safe on d1 you guys all these highlighted squares are protected by our pieces okay so queen takes f2 check was a one nothing move don't be afraid of it you can even see how stockfish is confused in this position like it wants black to play king f8 accepting to lose the right to castle you can see with your own eyeballs because if pawn to d6 we can simply take on g7 and once again black can't do anything in this position they can't give a check so that's why pawn to d6 is not a good move at all advanced players just go king f8 guarding the g7 pawn but here you can just continue with knight to h3 attacking the queen and please note that black's queen only has one good square queen d4 but here you can just go pawn to d3 see you are just one move away from trapping black's queen on d4 for example, if they play a useless move like pawn to a6, I'm just giving an example, you can just go pawn to c3 and black squid is dead. So they better do something else like, but here you have rook f1 first, you have ideas of sacrificing your rook on f7. If they play knight f6, wait a second you guys, you first of all sack your rook. If d6, which happened in the game that we are analyzing, this is when you can shock your opponent by sacrificing your queen. If king takes, now you go bishop h6 check, they'll go king g8 and this is when you can go knight e7 check. If they take, that's met. If you want to know more about the Vienna game Stanley variation, you can watch this video that has popped up in the cut above or you will find it in the comment section down below. Let's move on. Trap number three in the king's gambit accepted. Now this is where you start with e4, then black plays e5, you go pawn to f4, that's the king's gambit. Black will take, then you play knight f3 and then you can see again pawn to g5 is what everybody plays. You go knight c3, again they'll play knight g4, you can see that. And this is when you can save your knight by going knight e5 double attacking the g4 pawn once again you can see queen h4 is by far the top played move and that's check so you need to block the check not with your toes or your elbow but with your pawn so fg will be played then to neutralize black's attack you simply go for a queen exchange that is very fine according to stockfish and if you want to know more what would happen after queen takes g4 you can watch my king's gambit video that has popped up in the card above 
where I covered this opening in more detail, you have all sorts of moves that you are easily winning in this variation. But anyways, in most cases, black doesn't want to exchange queens just too early. They like to play this fancy move, which is the top played move once again in the Leech's database, point to g2, because that's a discovery check. So here you just simply take black's queen, and yes, they'll take your rook and promote, and now, Ladies and gentlemen, the best move which I recommended in my last King's Gambit video was Queen H5. Just going for this quick attack, you guys. Pressurize black and simplify the game as shown on the board. In this line, you are easily winning. By the way, black's queen is nearly trapped. However, instead of going Queen H5, well, I recommend that you go Knight D5, which is kind of dubious, I should say. But black players always make errors. They don't know how to defend against this. For example, Knight to A6, the top played move, turns out to be a big blunder because now you have Pawn to D4, and after Bishop E7, which they like doing to chase your queen away. Well, this is why you can sacrifice your queen on E7 once again. And after knight takes e7, you go knight f6 check. If king f8, that'll be met in one. If black decides to play king d8, well, you simply capture on f7. That'll be checkmate. Let's move on. Trap number four in the reverse Stafford Gambit. This is why you start with e4, then black plays e5. You go bishop c4, the bishop's opening, and now black plays knight f6. The top played move. So instead of playing knight c3 defending your pawn or pawn to d3, you just ignore that by going knight to f3, give up that pawn. If they take, you now go knight c3. You can see the top played move once again is knight takes c3, but this only allows you to have a position that looks like the Stafford Gambit now with white pieces. I've done a lot of videos about this, you guys. One of which has popped up in the cut above. Watch that interesting video after watching this. And now, for some reason, the top played move here is pawn to d6. That's what everybody plays, which is a mistake. Again, in my last Borden Kitsariski video, I recommended the move knight g5, which is the best move, by the way. You just want to destroy black's pawn structure on the king side and play queen f3, which is very difficult to defend. And here you are going to win easily. But hey, there are many ways of killing a rat. After black plays pawn to d6, you don't always have to go knight g5. You can also try to fancy with this move. Let's say castle short, giving black one more chance to blunder with this move, bishop g4, which they like doing because they like pinning knights. But ladies and gentlemen, this is when you can shock your opponents by simply giving up your queen. The idea is if they take your queen, which is the top played move, by the way, they will take this queen, but that will be checkmate in two after bishop takes f7 check and after king e7 only move, then you go bishop g5 checkmate. Yeah, but if black doesn't take your queen or doesn't play bishop g4 after you cast a shot, and let's say they go bishop e7, well, not all days are Mondays, you just keep on doing your thing, I mean, you get back your piece, you just sacrificed your pawn here. You can try to figure it out by playing the moves that I highlighted on the board. Let's move on. Trap number 5 in the Scandinavian defense, this is where you start with e4, black plays d5, and now you simply take queen takes d5, knight c3, and you can see once again, queen d8 is by far the top played move, well, I recommend you just go knight to f3, and the top played move here is knight to f6, you can see, then you go bishop c4, now wait a second, like in the Karakan defense, a typical Scandinavian player likes developing the light squared bishop before closing that pawn chain with pawn to e6 because the light squared bishop will be blocked. It won't be happy. In this case, you as white can just continue with d4. I mean, you just continue playing normally. You are going to have a normal game of chess here. You develop your dark squared bishop. I mean, you are just ahead in development. But that's why you're going to see typical Scandinavian players developing their bishop out of the pawn chain first before playing pawn to e6. Now, this is when you can surprise your opponents once again by simply sacrificing your queen right away in the opening stage and close to 12,000 people play bishop takes d1 not knowing that bishop takes f7 will be checkmate so these are some of the errors that most beginner players and intermediate level players tend to oversee which is why this video is very important today okay let's say you go knight e5 sacrificing your queen once again what if black doesn't take your queen and let's say they play bishop e6 yeah that's the best they can do but 
in this position you are just very good and clearly winning black has a very bad pawn structure you keep on developing all your pieces very fast and it's even difficult for black to progress in this position they can't castle short they can't develop their bishop i mean we have all the time it is worth to play bishop f4 as you might have noticed, I'm also showing you how you can continue playing if your queen sacrifice doesn't work. But the thing is, if they don't take your queen, which you sacrificed, they're going to end up with a bad position. Let's move on. Trap number six, in the Karokan defense. This is why you start with e4, the black plays c6, then instead of playing d4, you play knight to f3. Well, you can see d5 is the top played move. You just go knight c3. This is the two knights attack against the Karakan defense. You can see they always take on e4. You take back with your knight. I'll show you what to do against knight to f6. But let's start with bishop f5. Well, you simply go knight g3. They'll play bishop g6. You can see that. And now you start the kingside pawn storm immediately. h6 is the top played move. You go knight e5 attacking the bishop once again they'll play bishop h7 and now this is when you can go queen h5 wanting to mate on f7 immediately and what i recommend doing in this position you guys is to remove bishop c4 as fast as you can because that creates an impression as if you just hanged your queen they will take it and that will be checkmate i covered this line in more detail in the video that has popped up in the cut above you can check that out as well let's move on Trap number seven, again in the Karokan defense. Now I want to show you what to do in case black plays knight to f6. So you just start normally with e4 and d4. Then after d5, you try bishop d3 first. If they take, you just, I mean, go ahead and take knight to f6. You will play bishop f3 and start developing your other pieces very swiftly. Now there's another move that black players like playing here. Instead of playing d takes e4, they play the second common move here, knight to f6. Well, here you just go pawn to e5. After knight fd7, you continue pushing that pawn. They have to take, which is what they always do. Now you go queen h5 check, and this will be a mate into you. Suck your queen first. Doesn't matter even if you take with your bishop, but just be petty. Anyways, now like always, I cannot end this video without including some traps that you can try out with black pieces. In this case, in the Grunfeld defense. Now, I want to simplify the Grunfeld for you guys, especially beginners. This is a teasing defense. It is simply a mixture of the modern defense and pawn to d5. But you don't want to castle short early. And you will see how that goes. So why to begin with d4 and then you go knight to f6. Pawn to c4, then g6. So you can see the top played move is knight to c3. So instead of playing bishop g7, now you change your mind and play pawn to d5 right away. So this g6 pawn was kind of a decoy to deceive white, making him think you wanted to play the king's Indian defense or whatever. But here comes pawn to d5 and they'll always take this pawn. Now you go knight takes d5 and see this again you guys. They always play pawn to e4, trying to chase your knight away, but you don't go back. You go knight takes c3 immediately and they'll take back. So you intentionally give away the center to white. How do you break this little pawn chain on the center? Well, the key move to always think of is pawn to c5. But before playing pawn to c5, you need to make sure that your bishop is on g7. You have all these ideas as highlighted on the board. You will see white playing bishop c4. And remember, castling short is not part of your ideas. You simply go pawn to c5. The idea is if white takes, you're going to take the c3 pawn and win the rook. That's why white always plays knight e2. You play knight c6, putting more pressure on the d4 pawn. And again, they'll play bishop e3, defending that pawn four times. And this is when you can simplify the game. And you remember to play queen a5 check. They block with the bishop. You plant your queen in their territory. And then as you can see in the master's database, white plays rook b1 with an idea of trapping your queen. For example, you cast a shot, they play d5. If you go knight d8, bishop b4 traps your queen, which is on a3. Game over. So after pawn to d5 by white, you don't retreat your knight, but you go knight e5. Counter-attacking white slide squared bishop on c4. And this time, if they go bishop b4, <laughs> well, the truth is, yes, your queen is trapped. But that's what you wanted. And believe you me, guys, this is a line that every Grunfeld player has to know when they are studying this opening. The best move in this position, you guys, is queen f3. You sacrifice your queen because after gf, 
You have knight takes f3 check. White cannot escape from Sobibo. The only move is king f1, after which you go bishop h3 and as checkmate because these squares are covered by our knight. So that's just how deadly this trap is. Even if they don't take your queen after you sacrifice it on f3, let's say if they cast a shot, well, you can just start walloping all of white's pawns. You have all these ideas highlighted on the board. For example, if bishop b5, you go rook d8. Honestly, this is just completely losing for white. Let's move on. Trap number nine in the Italian game. Gioco Piano, this is where white starts with e4. Then you go e5, knight f3, you go knight c6, normal stuff, bishop c4, then you go bishop c5, and here black does all sorts of things. The common move from here, apart from c3, is castle short, after which you just go knight to f6, and you can see the top plate move is d3, then you simply go d6. Again, you can see white does all sorts of things in this position, h3, c3, bishop g5, knight c3, bishop e3. The move that we are looking for is bishop g5. Could be the top played move among beginners, but you go h6 in this position, and you can see bishop h4 is what everybody plays. You go g5, attacking the bishop, bishop g3, then you just continue advancing your pawn, but that hangs your g5 pawn, which is why they always take, you can see that's the top played move, but after knight takes g5, you just continue with h4, and again, knight takes f7 is by far the top played move, you can see, double attacking your queen and your rook on h8. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where you can shock your opponents by taking on g3, hence giving up your queen. First of all, White cannot take back with his f pawn, it is pinned by our bishop. So the top played move here is knight takes d8. They take your queen, and now that's when you play bishop g5. They always play queen d2. And now this is when you can play a silent move, ladies and gentlemen, knight d4. The main idea is to psych your knight on f3 and mate white in style. For example, if h takes g3, you can simply go knight f3 check and the only move for white is to take the knight after which bishop takes f3 instantly wins the game. There's nothing that white can do to stop the upcoming mate with rook h1 checkmate. I mean, even if white doesn't take on g3 with his h pawn, it doesn't matter even if they play h3 because here you can just go knight e2 check and after king h1, you sacrifice your rook. If g takes h3, now you can simply mate on f3 once again with your bishop. If you want to know more about this defense, you can watch the video that has popped up in the card above where I covered this in more detail. So that's it for today you guys, hope you enjoyed watching this video, if at all you did, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if at all you haven't already, and check out my courses which are very affordable at the moment at www.casperchess.com, there you can also sign up for my free masterclass and get yourself a free mini course, the link is in the description down below, it's at www.casperchess.com once again. Thank you for watching my video, until next time, bye bye.